Hello my darlings, it's Zui here and today I'm presenting to you another Bakugo story. Uh, just a quick heads up, uh, I want this to be something I dubbed modular stories. This essentially means that uh, roughly a quarter of the story will just mention Bakugo as the boyfriend. Meaning that this means that uh, like three quarters of the story I can then delete and then like replace a character. But you know... Essentially, this sets it up for rewrites, but more complex rewrites, because essentially I'm writing an entirely new story, I'm just saving myself, you know, a quarter of the work, which can be like, you know, let's assume a story would take me 10 hours, and a quarter of that would be what? I'm bad at math, please tell me what that would be. But anyways, I hope you enjoy it, just as much as I enjoyed writing it, and, uh... If you like this idea of me writing more modular stories, please tell me. I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, lastly, please, 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 please remember to watch the video until the end. Like or dislike and comment something down below. This way you support me with the YouTube algorithm. And the more support I get with the YouTube algorithm, the more people will watch my stuff. And the more people watch my stuff, the happier I get. So please, please make me happy. <laughs> I also have a Discord, and uh, we recently owned a venting chat there. A venting chat essentially means you can go there and tell us your worries, and we will try our best to give you the help that you maybe not get from your family because they don't understand you. That was a really long intro, but again, I hope you enjoyed the story as much as I enjoyed writing it. Let's get right into it, shall we? In the world of quirks, heroes, and villains, it was difficult to acquire a tranquil moment. Seeing your boyfriend burned out as he was hurt your soul. Admittedly, you weren't sure if your wish for peace and quiet was born out of genuine concern for him, or if you simply felt neglected. Either way, the both of you needed to get out of the city. Behind his back, he went through his schedules. Luckily, the two of you worked at the same hero agency. Him as the star hero and you as his simple secretary. You pulled a few strings and managed to get him an entire week off. Without it, counting towards vacation time. But this did mean for a few days he'd be working overtime. You'd use this to your advantage. To plan more privately. A friend of yours had recently went on a hiking trip. While walking for miles through wet and cold forests didn't seem like something you wanted to do, there was something else they experienced during their time. A private winter lodge the pro-hero Grape Juice rented out to heroes whenever he and his wife didn't use it. And he even gave heroes he personally knew a discount. You just had to take that deal. Behind your boyfriend's back, you began packing your things and selected just the most perfect outfits for him. This place was reclusive, in the middle of a forest that had snow gently covering it every day. With an anticipation-filled heart, you looked at pictures the hero had sent your way. It looked like a childhood dream of yours. But just when you were about to put the pictures back into your wallet, your boyfriend barged in on you. And he gave you a confused look. Going first from you, to the backs, and back to you. This was awkward. Are you breaking up with me? In both confusion and sudden, quickly rising anger. You shook your head in response, and chuckled softly. N no it was supposed to be a surprise. You paused, realizing quickly that maybe you should tell him to prevent him from doing or saying something stupid. A good surprise, you quickly added. Now that the cat was out of the bag, you really found no other way around it, and told him all about your little devious plan. 
ending with him simply shrugging and agreeing to it. With an impatient sigh, Bakugo sat next to you in your car, hand under his chin. To not spoil the surprise, you were the one driving. He was on snack duty. The drive took a few hours, leading the both of you through the tranquil countryside of Japan. Despite the advancements with quirks and technology, big chunks of the country were still pretty backwards. But still civilized enough to not accidentally fall into a live recreation of the Chainsaw Massacre. You leaned to your right a little and opened your mouth, and Bakugo chuckled. Snack duty meant that the blonde would put chips and small chocolate pieces into your mouth, so you had something to eat while you could concentrate on the road. Here you go, he said with a smile before gently setting a broken off piece of cookie onto your tongue. Hmm, you said while chewing. Chocolate chip peanut, my favorite. He gave a quick laugh. <laughs> I had nothing to do with this, nerd. You brought all this. He pointed at the collection of colorful snack and candy packages on his lap. Mind if I put on some music? So far you had been playing an audiobook of some woman's novel about a female blacksmith and her adventures of self-discovery. As the radio had trouble picking up a station not run by some right-winged nut who kept shouting about gay squirrels and how Germany was brainwashing the people of Japan and America with fascistic ideas. But it just got good. The soft female voice that was reading the audiobook had just reached a point where the blacksmith was about to court a young vagabond. Bakugo frowned, and you chuckled. <sighs> okay, fine, but there isn't anything playing. That's where you're wrong, nerd shouted Bakugo excitedly. I wanted to give you this at the lodge, but... Man, that melodramatic bullshit is getting on my nerves. You blushed. Uh, sorry, so, uh, what is it? With a grin, he pulled out a small CD case. The handwriting on it was undoubtedly that of your mutual friend Jiro, and it read, Best of 80s. You got me a mixtape? You squeaked with excitement. I know how my little nerd likes her oldies. You huffed. Huh, not my fault modern music doesn't know what synth is. They're too busy saying the n-word every ten seconds, followed by the word bitch. Bakugo laughed out loud. Man, I love you. He thought with a mild blush before ejecting the audiobook's CD and replacing it with the 80s collection. Your eyes widened upon hearing the first song. No! Yes! No! You said louder. Yes! But it isn't Thursday! I know! Was his response. Oh god, I love you! Bakugo laughed, and you bobbed your head as Out of Touch by Daryl Hall and John Oates began to blast from the radio speakers. The sun had started to set when the first patches of snow appeared on the ground. We're there yet. That was the first time Bakugo asked, and you grinned. Mm, you're impatient today, aren't you? We are running out of snacks. He said, knowing full well, he said, knowing full well what you were about to do next, which was hitting the gas. Bakugo laughed nervously as he took the cart's door handle into his right hand. Just two hours later, the lights of the lodge came into view. Holy crap! barked Bakugo. It looked like a castle made from wood in the distance. Seemingly every possible light the lodge had was turned on, creating a North Star-like appearance that the two of you would follow. You had requested Mineta to turn on the lights before you and Bakugo arrive, knowing that the sun would have already been gone when the both of you reached the door. 
Like a beautiful aquarel painting of an idyllic scene unfolded your view of the place. Isn't this the best place to spend a week? Just the two of us? You said, giddy to see the inside. It does look kind of cozy, he said, trying his best to sound pessimistic. How expensive did you say this was? You gave Bakugo a smug look. Next to nothing, because you and me net are friends. Bakugo shrugged. If it wasn't for his wife, <laughs> I don't want to know where he would be today. Ten minutes later, you arrived. <sighs> it's cold, you said as the frosty air entered your lungs while taking out your bags. How can you fort this thing? growled Bakugo while ascending the steps to the lodger's entrance. I guess number one hero benefits, you mused. Don't remind me of that nerd. He paused in front of the locked door. You got the keys? He asked. And you shrugged helplessly. I thought you have it! He blinked, his face turning red. But before he could curse at you, you quickly pulled out the lodger's key from your pockets. Don't worry, babe. I got you covered. You were finally here. An entire week, just you and him. Inside a warm, snow-covered building. After unpacking, the two of you explored the area. The lodge had a living room the size of your parents' apartment, with a modern fireplace. The kitchen perfectly clean with neatly sorted tableware. Bakugo especially took a liking to the golden forks and knives you found in one of the drawers. However, when you two found the pool and sauna in the basement, there was no holding him back. He immediately discarded his clothes and jumped into the pool. You squeaked and jumped back as the water splashed into your direction. He laughed wholeheartedly after spitting out some of the f He laughed wholeheartedly after spitting out some of the clear water. This has almost no chlorine in it, holy crap! How does he keep this clean? He shouted, before swimming over to you with a white grin. And he asked, How about some skinny dipping, my lady? He hasn't called you his lady in a long time. You simply smiled, biting your lips seductively you slowly peeled off your clothes and dropped them on a nearby lounger. <laughs> Ready for your present, big boy? You said, while you tried to sound seducive, it sounded more smug. But he was already completely hypnotized by your nakedness, and he gave you a dumb smile. <laughs> a present for what? You got on all fours and slowly approached him. For all the hard work you put into your job. Finally you reached him and cradled your arms around his shoulder, softly pressing his face into your chest. He hummed happily like a child, before you let yourself slide into the surprisingly warm water of the pool. Hours later you found yourself in Bakugo's carrying arms in front of the fireplace. Hair still wet from the little water escapade. It had taken longer than you were willing to admit, but you knew very well he would brag about it. Locker room talk like that was normal when it came to him. He had thrown a blanket over the both of you and were enjoying a quiet moment. His hands gently moved over your tummy and chest while his chin rested softly on your shoulder. His slow breaths tickled over your skin. This was a good idea, he muttered quietly. Oh, really now? He tilted his head slightly further into you. Mm. We needed this, you said softly. 
Did we now? He answered. Yeah. You took one of his hands in yours. You were so busy. And I... I just felt so... needy. Why were you feeling like crying now? I... I missed you so much. You whispered. He smiled and deeply exhaled, before brushing away one of your tears. I love you, he said, as you leaned further into him and closed your eyes. <laughs>